Hi, this is Sarah. And this is Rachel. And this is The Rip It Diaries, a podcast where we rip apart episode by episode The Vampire Diaries, but we just finished season one, so we are instead doing a special episode where we'll be talking about The Vampire Diaries and its similarities to the new show, The Summer I Turned Pretty. So there will be spoilers for The Summer I Turned Pretty, the entire television series, Mm -hmm. and of course for The Vampire Diaries, the entire television series. I think both book series are off limits. <laughs> yeah. Vampire Diaries book series, not even going to touch it. Yeah. The Summer I Turned Pretty, neither of us have read it, so mm-hmm. no sense in talking about it, even though all the TikTok comments have spoiled it for me. Yeah, everyone on TikTok is yeah. so always saying what happens in the books. But, I mean, yeah. there's also been a lot of rumor mill that, like, the show isn't even going to follow the yeah. books anyway. Like, at the point we're recording this, there are only two seasons out for yeah. The Summer I Turned Pretty, so, like... Who knows? It, they could drastically change it anyway. It doesn't matter yeah. that Jenny Han, who wrote the books, is involved or not. Like, yeah. Honestly, that might be more way to say that she could really change everything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I saw someone saying on TikTok, which, again, on TikTok. Yeah. But I did see someone saying that Jenny herself has said that she wants to make changes from the books. Yeah. So, maybe. Yeah. I feel like, why not? Um, and the show is yeah. so popular that, like, why not? Keep yeah. people guessing. But we've seen the yeah. dangers of that. Yes. Yeah, at Pretty Little Wires. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you should stick to the books. Yeah. But yeah, I was going to say, she could pull a Julie Pleck and try to, like, change things up just because she either does or doesn't want to give the fans what they want. Yeah, that's true. So, either way, there's a lot of similarities to yeah. talk about these shows with, regardless of the fact that they were both based on books yeah. that they did or did not follow. Um you know, first of all, I think it's they're both two teen geared TV shows, shows yeah. about teenagers and shows that teenagers um, and honestly, adults like to watch, too. Like they're just two yeah. good shows geared at like a similar age group. Um, yeah. That's, I think, the first similarity we can draw here, of course. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, The Summer I Turned Pretty definitely could have been on The CW. Oh, it's definitely absolutely. so that vibe. Maybe not quite as dramatic as The CW shows, but yeah. it, it, it fits the vibe. So there's yeah, definitely... Yeah that similarity and then obviously i mean the whole plot is the whole plot of the summer i turned pretty in a major part of the vampire diaries is one woman stuck between two brothers yeah and a love triangle around them yeah and for me that's like the biggest thing that makes me want to talk yeah. about why they're similar because Same. many shows movies books etc have love triangles i mean yeah. people love to be like twilight did it first twilight did it first yeah uh, sure sure twilight did have a big love triangle but between two brothers is bold yeah and only vampire Diaries in the summer i turned pretty to what i can like yeah. immediately recall have really like culturally done that um, yeah. So that just makes the two of them, I think, like intrinsically tied together. The the love triangle between two brothers is like a very specific thing to to yeah. do. Yeah, it's such a fine line to toe for oh. both Belly and Elena and yeah. the shows themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and we'll get into that. But that like is definitely too something that happens with any love triangle is the teams. And, like, the Team Conrad, Team Damon, Team Stefan, you know, like, it's just such a thing. Team Jacob, Team Edward. Yeah, yeah. That's such a part of these, like, love triangle shows. And for me, that's also another thing, I think, that really draws these two together. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, my recollection of Twilight was, like, sure, there were people who were Team Jacob, but, like, pretty much everyone was Team Edward. Like, that was an unspoken thing. But, like, when the Vampire Diaries, at least the first three seasons were airing, Mm -hmm. And when, you know, now that the first couple of seasons of The Summer I Turned Pretty is airing, it's really interesting how you actually see such a mix of people, like, genuinely supporting, like, both. Like, I don't see a favoritism yet, necessarily. Yeah, not really. I think there's, like, maybe a slight favoritism toward, at least from what I'm seeing, and maybe it's because, you know, you curate your FYP for yourself, I feel like I've seen mostly, like, Team Conrad stuff. Yeah. But I do see a lot of people in the comments of those TikToks saying, Yeah. Team Jeremiah all the way. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's definitely the most, like, divisive. Because even, yeah, Edward and Jacob, even, like, a, a Jess and Dean. Oh, yeah. It's like, not many people are like, I love Dean. He's yeah. the best. <laughs> like, yeah. there's just no way. Which I will say, too, like, and even with Vampire Diaries, like, yeah, you do still see both, but of course most people are Team yeah. Damon now that, like, that's the way that the chips fell in yeah. the show is, like, when you do have, like, an entire series to look back on and choose who you're going to, like, yeah. side with, 
most people are going to side with the people who were endgame. Do it, yeah. Or you get such a long history to building to that endgame that, like, of course you're going to support Delena. You're going to support yeah. that ship. Um, that's the thing that's really interesting about watching The Summer I Turn Pretty, like, as it's airing, because... Yeah. I mean, Belly herself is flip-flopping back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's easy to be, like, watching the discourse flip back and forth mm-hmm. and be like, well, you know, like, history will be written by the victors. We will see who will end up being, like, the, the big ship in the end. Um, but while you're in it, it's, like, really hard to tell because yeah, we don't know. I mean, again, the book people have a lot to say, but, like, that doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's true. I mean, obviously, yeah, there is an end game in the books, which we will not talk about, but... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think also Julie Pleck herself has said that if they had gotten another season or if Nina had stayed on for those last two seasons, they wanted her to circle back to Stefan. Yeah. So I don't know. It's really interesting about, yeah, where you just kind of happen to end up is yeah. is the stronger ship usually. Yeah, of course, because you get the, the bragging rights of being endgame. Yeah, it's like, like, well, obviously I'm right. Yeah. yeah the show yeah. did it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and two with like Damon and Elena, like. You know, they got together in season three and were together till the end, which is yeah. like five seasons compared to Stefan and Elena's like kind of weak, like three. Like yeah. they had two strong and three was like they were barely together. So yeah. like. Yeah, I would say even just the two seasons. Yeah. So it's hard to to sort of compare to when you have like time on one one team's side in that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's there's so many comparisons to. We'll get into all like the boys and the ships yeah, and all of yeah. that. But I think like the first place that we have to start with comparing them is who I think are the main characters of both shows. Yes. Um, Elena for the Vampire Diaries. I know some people say that it's Stefan, but I think it's Elena. I think the people who say it's yeah. Stefan are no, it's it's Elena. Yeah. And, and Belly for the Summer I Turn Pretty. And for our sake they are the two that are the most comparable here obviously of course yeah they're both the females in the love triangle you know stuck between the two brothers it's such an easy yeah well easy and debatable comparison to make here in a lot of ways they're very similar but in a lot of ways they're like super super different yeah i will say i think just the fact that you know belly and elena are at the center of these love triangles and therefore i agree those are the two to compare i think how dissimilar they are for me has really ruined a lot of the comparison and the parallel. Yeah. Like, I, I will say, I'm obviously a hater, first and first most. <laughs> so, first and foremost. So, I, well, I'm anti belly I think she's the worst. I think she's so bad, which she is a teenager. Let's, yeah. let's just come right out and say. She's just a 16-year-old girl. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's where it really, the parallels break down a little bit for me. It's just that Belly is so, so different than Elena. Yeah. And I think that that's an important place to start is, like, Belly is a teenager. Because, of yeah. course, Elena's supposed to be a teenager, too. She's 17. Belly is, I think, 16 when the show starts. Yeah. So they're really supposed to be the same age. But I think the thing is, like, they're at drastically different places in their life. Definitely. If Vampire Diaries had started one year earlier... I think Elena and Belly could have been more similar. Yeah. I don't think intrinsically they're very, like, similar people necessarily. Mm -mm. But I think they would have had a lot more similarities. But, of course, the big thing here is that the Vampire Diaries starts just a few months after Elena lost both of her parents in a car accident when she was also in the car and should have died. Yeah. That changes a person. That Yeah, that is a trauma that really will really rapidly make you more mature like, oh yeah yeah i i feel like you know as a teenager i definitely probably thought yeah i'd act just like elena <laughs> she's so mature i'm so mature yeah realistically i was probably way more like belly yeah but yeah you forget i think and again i don't know if i would have the same like hindsight about belly but being you know in my 20s obviously i'm like okay she's very immature she is a 16 year old girl yeah but even you know rewatching the vampire diaries i'm like Elena is a very mature 17-year-old. Oh, yeah. Even, like, from the start of the show. Yeah, I think about it all the time. And, like, we only get a couple of flashbacks, really, of Elena pre her parents' death. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to tell us, for sure, like, her personality. But I just strongly believe that losing her parents at such a young age is what made her so mature and so, so different than... I mean, honestly, her classmates, like, we talked about it a lot at the start of season one that, like, Caroline and Bonnie and, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the vibes of the other girls in the class are so different than Elena. Yes. Um, 
And Belly is much more a true, true 16, 17 year old girl. And like, yeah, yeah I can't say I wouldn't be <laughs> Belly in like not this situation because I really don't think I would personally get into this situation. But I would. <laughs> you might. I would have. I still could. Who am I kidding? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you could. You could. I believe you. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, you know, I, I think I would probably act like Belly in a lot yeah. of these scenarios, like as a 16 year old. Oh, um, for sure. For sure. It's just so inherent to be so like like self-serving and whatever yeah but I will say in Belly's favor like I think it's actually kind of different that we are going through it's it's hard I almost don't want to compare them but mm-hmm. the biggest event in Belly's life now is Susanna passing at the start of season yeah. two and that's sort of that event like Elena's losing her parents that I mm-hmm. think will change her as a person the difference is like I didn't realize like they had only lost Susanna for like like a month or something when yeah. season two picks up. Like it hasn't even been that long. They're yeah. very actively grieving her. Yeah, I know. When they first started season two, for some reason, I thought it was, you know, like a year since Susanna yeah. had passed. And then they sort of, I don't know if I want to say reveal, but they reveal that it's really only been like a month or six weeks. Like, yeah, they're very actively, which yeah. I think justifies Belly's actions too, because it's it's really crazy when you put yeah. it into perspective. It's like, when you're 16 and you lose somebody for the first time, and I especially imagine. somebody like Susanna, like, because I will say, you know, like, I lost my first person when I was 16, but it was, like, my grandfather, who was very old, and, like, we built up to it <laughs> yeah, over a yeah. year, and, like, he was, you know, it's, like, I think that's what most high schoolers go through, and, of course, that's really difficult, yeah. um, but losing someone like Susanna, who's, like, pretty much a mother figure, She's, if oh, not, yeah, like, for sure. a very close aunt. Yes. And also, like, seeing a very young person get very sick and die very yeah. rapidly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she can only be, you know, 40s, maybe 50s. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's like, I, I mean, you can't say that that's not traumatic for Belly, and we're just seeing her going through that in... Um, in real time in the yeah. show. Where's Elena again? Like, she's still grieving, of course. Um, but we're picking up, like, three, four months after her parents died versus, like, yeah. you know, a few weeks. Which is very different on the timeline of, like, grief and emotions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of one, not point towards Belly, I suppose, but, like, yeah. just sort of helping justify maybe why her actions are so different. I would yeah. love to see how different Elena would have been if all of this had happened that close to losing her parents, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, what I was going to say was, you know, again, this is sort of, I'm trying to, you know, give Belly a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. I think something from Elena's experience and from the show that we can sort of, sort of think about as being similar is when Elena loses Jeremy, obviously, I mean, she turns off her her humanity, which obviously isn't happening in the summer. (laughs) I turned pretty. Yeah. But... Obviously, she's pushed to that point where she needs to turn off her humanity. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think, you know, that has as much to do with vampire emotions being heightened. Like, I really think her grief, who knows what type of person she would have been. Like, Oh, yeah. I do think Belly has a lot of different characteristics than Elena. Because, of course, Elena's most, you know, the thing that people say about Elena the most is that she is a very caring and compassionate person. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't see that with Belly so much as, like, I don't really know what Belly's like defining characteristic is necessarily. Yeah. I think she's very much figuring herself out like right now. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's another thing that goes to how 16 she is, is I don't think she really does have a very clearly and well-defined personality. I mean, yeah. volleyball. I don't know. There's, <laughs> I feel like we get so little of who she is outside of, you know, her relationships with Conrad and Jeremiah. That, that's true. And that's, that's sort of the limitation of the show is this sort of summertime show as well. Right. Where, like, we are only seeing this, like, small portion of her life. Um, and yeah. that doesn't necessarily tell us who she is in a lot of ways as, like, a person. Because, um, I don't know, I do think Belly does show a lot of, like, caring traits, like, with... Definitely. Especially Susanna and, like, her mother in the first season. So... I don't know. It's well, it's hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I have a lot of opinions. I don't know. I feel like Belly. I don't know. She's, she's very sixteen. She's very sixteen, and I think for me, uh, she's much more selfish than I think Elena would ever be. Yeah, but it's and hard I, again to say like that. Elena yeah. wouldn't do those same things pre losing her parents. I mean, literally, like the night her parents died, she like skipped game night, and yeah. like I know that sounds so frivolous and silly, but like I don't know. We don't know how much of a like 
fight and like dramatic whatever that she put up that's true it could have been very dramatic which also that probably is a lot of what also shaped elena's personality post her parents death too is that her parents did die picking her up from a party that she skipped game night to be at like yeah i don't know there's so much there about family that i think belly is learning in the second season especially yeah of summer i turned pretty that i'm like I'm hoping we see a lot of that growth in the third season because I agree. She's in a very selfish phase of life right now. Yeah. That, like, I just hope is not actually her person, her character. Yeah. I think it's just her age. Um, yeah, I hope so. I, I We'll see. <laughs> we'll we'll see. see. I guess I have to reserve some judgment, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a problem when you're 16. If you looked at me when I was 16, people would say awful. Like, I probably oh, was, like, same, the brattiest, yeah. like, selfish. Oh, I was terrible. What I, like, that's just part of being 16. And, yeah. like, Elena is, like, such a unique unrealistic yes. i would say person yeah that oh way. definitely yeah um and again i think it is like mostly coming from the grief of losing her parents that is like so rapidly matured her yeah and I that's so what too. lends to her getting together with two brothers that are in their hundreds um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah true <laughs> and so that's our sort of segue i guess into the yeah. brothers the brother of it all mm-hmm. um so of course you know elena gets involved with stefan at school mm-hmm. she doesn't know he's a vampire he's just another 17 year old yeah. kid um but then of course it's revealed and through all of that she meets damon and things yeah. escalate from there um, but of course, like the brothers and Elena end up developing a very, very deep bond and like mm-hmm. friendship and romantic relationships, um, which is very different than Belly, of course, who grew up with both of these brothers. Yeah. Like they are basically her brothers in like a lot of ways or her cousins. Like they yeah. grow up like family, which is what does make this harder for me in a way to accept Belly because it's like girl like how yeah. can you do the things you are doing to a family that you care so much, so about? much about yeah i think that's again this is another place where a lot of the parallels really fall apart because it's just so terrible like this whole setup is really bad and belly does some very awful things that are going to which again maybe they won't but i think realistically they would ruin the relationship both with the brothers and then between the brothers yeah i think so too I, that's like that is my biggest i think problem with the summer i turned pretty is it's like elena gilbert would never she would never she switched brothers once yes and stuck to that i will not like lie and say she did not of course develop feelings for damon while she was with stefan yeah she was sort of in a emotional flip-flop for basically all of season three let's be real like yeah. her and stefan pretty much broke up um, because he was with Klaus and she spent a lot of time with Damon and that would be her most I would say flip floppy season mm-hmm. but even then it is nowhere near the levels no. of flip flop that that Belly is doing with yeah like the brothers there I don't even really consider it a flip flop I feel like Elena drew a hard line and really never crossed it I mean yeah obviously we know canonically she falls in love with Damon when he gives her back the necklace but even then I think for all intents and purposes she and Stefan were broken up. Stefan was yeah. off literally murdering people. Yeah. And obviously she wanted to fight to get him back. But I do think at that point it mostly became, you know, because she loved Stefan, she wanted him to be back to his usual self. Yeah. Not for her, for their relationship. I think yeah. she felt she owed it to Stefan to get him back. But I don't think yeah. it was because she was thinking, oh, I'm going to get him back so I can possibly have a relationship with him and with Damon and I can flip flop <laughs> back and forth yeah. between the brothers. Yeah. No, I just don't. I don't know. I don't think Alina would ever cross that line. Yeah, I agree. And we've talked about this in some episodes that we've done, too, where it's like Elena is always so conscious of what her yes. decisions will do to them as brothers and as, you know, just everything, like as individuals. Yeah. Whereas I think Belly sometimes displays concern and thoughtfulness and a lot yeah. of times does not why why after breaking up with conrad do you need to pick jeremiah of all people can't she meet someone at school i guess that's what i'm wondering i mean I obviously you, you have to accept it's a television show but yeah i mean yeah i just like moments after breaking up with conrad and like they're driving him to his exam his oh, final and then that they, was awful they spent the whole day at 
Finch, like, why couldn't they make out there? I don't understand. Like, I know, it was weird. I I, I think, again, terrible. this is where, like, for me, the, like, grief mindset also comes in. Because I think in a lot of ways, Belly just wants to seek comfort and attention from somebody who is yeah. easy. Who is easily willing Definitely. to give her that comfort and attention. And that's Jeremiah. Conrad's yeah. not there. He's dealing with his own grief. He lost his mother. Yeah. Like, you know, I think that that is like a big driving factor in this of like belly doesn't just want to be she doesn't want just like a boyfriend she doesn't just want to be in a relationship with a guy at school she wants someone who like loves her and is devoted to her and will like give her that like comfort and safety and like that is built in with jeremiah and i think that that's a lot of why she does what she does but it it's obviously like i think wrong i just can't believe that she flip flop i was like screaming at the tv I watching know. season two i was like this is wild screaming crying throwing up I yeah was like, what is she doing yeah it really is crazy and again yeah. like how do you do that to those brothers um so to get into the brother of it all yeah i, I don't know i mean it, it's so hard the biggest discourse about this show especially in relation to vampire diaries is like which brother is which is is yeah you know, Stefan is Jeremiah or Conrad. Damon is Jeremiah or Conrad. There's, like, a lot of debate to be had there. Yeah. We'll, of course, acknowledge that Gavin, who plays Jeremiah, did play young yes. Damon, which yeah. people love to bring up in comment sections of being, like... Every, every TikTok. Yeah, of course. That every means he is he's the Damon of the yeah. relationship because he played young Damon, which I don't think is, of course, true or, like, valid of a no. debate there at all. It's a no. fun fact. It's a nice yeah. little line to be drawn between the yeah. two shows, but it does not actually play into who, who is which in yeah. in the you know relationships. Although I will say, of course, when we do see Jeremiah in season one at the very start, especially, he's giving Damon vibes in terms of being like yeah. this flirt, this player. He's very like you know the blue eyes and like the yeah. vibes and like that's so Damon. So like yeah. There are other, like, comparisons to be drawn, but I do think, ultimately, there are comparisons to be drawn between, like, either brother to either brother. Like, yeah, absolutely. you can make this argument any which yes. way you want. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was, I, so I, you know, I said this before, we didn't talk about this too much going into the episode because we didn't want to spoil for each other, but I mostly am, like, you know, I could see either being either, but I do sort of think, I think of Jeremiah as Damon, for a few Ooh. reasons. And I figured that would be different than what you think. Yeah. But, well, so I think just, like, the very basics, like, the fundamentals of the plot, I see Jeremiah being Damon. Because, you know, he he and Belly... <laughs> I gotta make sure I'm saying the right people with the right I job. Know, I'm like Jeremiah confused. and Belly have their first kiss mm-hmm. before Belly gets with Conrad. Which I think yeah. is a strong parallel to Damon actually having met Be- or Elena... <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this. Please bear with me. I think it's a parallel to Damon actually meeting Elena first. And then Elena gets gets with Stefan. I almost said Conrad. This is so bad. Okay. Yeah. She, Damon meets Elena first. Mm -hmm. But then Elena gets with Stefan and they start dating. And obviously, you know, Jeremiah is sort of the second choice as is Damon. They sort of, you know, they end up being the like second couple, the second pairing and those sorts of things. So I think those very very basic comparisons and then a few more of the personality comparisons and i guess the blue eyes sure we can we can include that (laughs) yeah i think those sort of make me lean toward maybe jeremiah being damon i don't know i think jeremiah i flip-flop more on but conrad gives me such stefan vibes really very strong stefan vibes see i feel the exact opposite conrad is so damon to me but i will build off your debate of jeremiah being damon because i think there's a lot there yeah um and i will say a like sort of argument that i've latched on to pretty strongly from tiktok that i've seen people making (laughs) of course is that you know as people jeremiah is damon and conrad is stefan right but as a relationship with belly conrad and belly are much more damon and elena and jeremiah and belly are much more stefan and elena yeah which i think there's that's sort of the argument in my mind that makes the most sense although of course i do think that there are arguments the other way of course um you know i think the big thing you mentioned is like the the quote that always sticks with me is the like it's always gonna be stefan yeah 
Belly basically says that verbatim about Conrad. Like, it's always going to yeah. be Conrad. So that, I think, is, like, a big factor in mm-hmm. wanting, you know, or in seeing it that way of, like, Conrad is... Oh my god, the names are so confusing. I know, I know. Conrad <laughs> is Belly's Stefan because it's always going to yeah. be him. It's like that is the love yeah. that she pines for. Um, but I don't know if I actually like sort of like track those relationships in that way because to me the like factor that makes Conrad the Damon to me is sort of like his self-destructiveness is such a key mm. factor that Damon also has and brings to this relationship yeah that for me is what really makes him the Damon Mm -hmm. and Jeremiah is the Stefan and that he's almost like it was like I was saying earlier like he's sort of the easier bet he's like the easier more reliable brother the one that she can be like safe and comfortable with and just be like I can trust that this is gonna be like yeah you know, where you can be in love and this will be easy and I'm not going to have to fight with you and I'm not going to, like, lose your attention just because, like, you know, whatever Conrad's always, yeah. like, you know. So I don't know. That's the factor for me that always makes it a little bit more like Conrad is the Damon is because, like, mm-hmm. he does have these, like, very self-destructive tendencies that Damon often does have. Yeah, I can kind of see that. But I, I don't know. I think it's – I I think – Conrad again I think I'm chalking a lot of his behavior his characteristics up to grief so I think I think of him less as actually being that self-destructive and those sorts of things because again I I think a lot of those can be attributed to grief but the things that again these could also be attributed to grief but his very like closed offness and his very like lack of communication skills I feel like is very much Stefan to me like I feel like so much of season one and two is just Stefan and Elena not communicating well. And I think that's a lot of what true. happens with Conrad and Belly. They're just not communicating with each other. Yeah, I think that's true. It's like I said, it's like you can argue this truly like any which way uh, yeah, of like absolutely. a number of factors. It really is like you pick like a new yeah. piece to turn over and suddenly you're like, well, I guess yeah. like Conrad's <laughs> the Stefan, like it completely makes yeah. sense, which is I think what ultimately like makes this really interesting in the comparing because like yeah. you can just turn it over every which way and see it that way yeah. um another thing that like really does for me see like conrad as the damon mm-hmm. is what's um not stefan oh my god the name <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> steven towards the end of season two of the summer i turned pretty steven and taylor are talking on their little like date thing yeah about you know belly and conrad and jeremiah and which ones they ship and Steven's, like, main arguing point of why he ships Conrad with Belly mm-hmm. is because he thinks Conrad challenges her, that yeah. he sees all the amazing parts of her. And this is such a strong parallel to the Vampire Diaries when Rose, yeah. as a ghost, comes back to talk to Jeremy because normal Vampire Diaries <laughs> things. Of course, of course. It sounds so funny in, like, the context of the summer I turned pretty, yeah. but whatever. Um, and, of course, Rose says that Damon challenges Elena that Stefan will, of course, always be good for Elena, that they'll always be, Mm -hmm. like, you know, this easy, pure love, but that, like, ultimately Elena deserves someone that will challenge her, which is, like, the same exact word Stephen uses. Yeah. Yeah, that scene, I immediately wrote down when I watched it. I was like, this, of course, calls to mind when Rose says, Damon challenges Elena. Yeah. But I have to disagree with Stephen. I just don't actually think Conrad challenges Belly. The challenge is that Conrad is grieving and he isn't yeah. communicating well and he's so back and forth on his feelings with her. I, I don't know if I would actually really consider that a challenge. Yeah. I don't know. I do wonder what he is referring to when he says that. I've never seen him challenge her. Besides, <laughs> yeah. like, making her chase him, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's hard because we only get such small glimpses of the time that yeah. they're together because it happens between the season jumps. Yeah. So we like really only vaguely see it. Um, but in my understanding of their relationship during that time, they do seem to like be really good for each other in terms of like pursuing like school mm-hmm. and like your future. And like they do seem to have a relationship that is pretty in depth about like what their lives could be and what yeah. their goals could be and like how they can better themselves yeah. as like athletes and people and yada yada whereas like i mean jeremiah iced out belly for that whole year (laughs) so we don't get anything yeah there's nothing to take away but and again 
a lot of this can be chalked up to grief, but we know that even before Susanna passed away, Belly was, she quit volleyball. She started like, you know, not being as into volleyball. And I don't know, she, it seems like she went very like inward and went inside herself. And I don't really see Conrad having challenged her to be that better athlete. I mean, she rejoins volleyball camp when she runs off with Jeremiah at the end. I don't know. I don't really see, again, I think a lot of it probably, you know, we're just not seeing anything of their relationship. Yeah. But it seems like such an interesting thing for Steven to have said if we, the audience, aren't really getting anything. I think it almost is like a writer problem of the writers want us to know that, that Conrad challenges Belly, but because of the limited airtime of being a what is the season? It's yeah. like eight episodes, ten episodes, something like that for yeah, Summer like Return eight, Pretty. Yeah. So we've only gotten 20 episodes, which is not even a full <laughs> one season of Vampire Diaries. Yeah, no. Um, so that's kind of the thing that I think is crazy here. And even trying to compare them because the like amount of that's time true. they have to build out these relationships is like so drastically different. Um, yeah. That it does feel like sometimes the Summer Return Pretty goes the like tell instead of when they should show. Right route um which is where i'm curious if like in the next season if they'll do some of that stuff i will say though in his favor i think the conrad thing to me is almost less that he challenges her is like he understands her is would Mm. be my argument for conrad you know there's so many examples of just even remembering like the candy that she prefers to eat whereas jeremiah just buys her the candy that he likes and like i don't know that to me is like if i were steven that's argument maybe i would have made i don't know where the challenges yeah. comes from i don't know yeah not sure i i don't know i again i think for me it's just that there's so many more similarities between conrad and stefan yeah. whereas jeremiah is almost like a flex character to me like i feel like he really mm-hmm. does have a lot yeah and i don't know i also thought about this i feel like there was a pretty dramatic shift between the two seasons so obviously yeah. have to talk about it Conrad stepping in for Jeremiah to dance oh, with Belly. That's like the strongest so parallel. Clearly, yeah, yeah, so clearly. Yeah. Just an aside, I feel like some parallels I've seen, a little reaching. But <laughs> this one is a very, very strong parallel. Yeah. The, and the challenging. Yeah. Both of those, such strong, like visually and like such good parallel that I think obviously in that scene, Conrad is Damon. Yeah. Jeremiah is Stefan. Oh, exactly. But to me, it almost feel like feels like there's a shift between the two seasons. And again, maybe it's chalked up to the relationship we're not seeing. But it almost seems like after that, that that's when Conrad really becomes Stefan. Just the way he's... Yeah. Maybe, maybe the way he's handling his grief. I don't know. Yeah. I think that that could be fair because I actually would say, yeah, season one is when Conrad is the most Damon-like. Yeah. And I would say towards the end of season two, he also becomes basically like the second he sees that Jeremiah and Belly yeah. are getting together, I think he shifts back into that sort of like Damon mm. exterior. But I agree with you. I think at that early to like middle of season two, he's almost, yeah, he is more Stefan-like. And I do yeah. think the grief factor is like a big piece of that. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It's so hard that they're in such a like intense emotional change part of their life that it's yeah. really hard to compare. And again, too, it's not even the same like timeline wise of Vampire Diaries. We're getting yeah. like one season worth out of them, basically. Yeah. Where the season is like a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, the dance is such a big like visual parallel, story parallel. Yeah. Um, another one actually that's kind of interesting, which um, I guess sort of does like make the argument of Conrad being the Stefan is of course the necklace for both of them right yeah Elena of course always wears this classic you know the metal round necklace yeah. with the red gem from Stefan and Belly I don't know that she wears it much but it's brought up all the time that there's this infinity necklace mm-hmm. that he has for her and the infinity is always like their thing yeah um especially in season two he's always carrying around that infinity necklace um Maybe that's another parallel. I don't know. I almost saw the fact that Belly didn't wear that necklace as being almost a little more Damon in a way where like Mm -hmm. she's like refusing the necklace in that way. I don't know. It's so hard. But it's not like another it's like a reach detail in a way. But it's like it's interesting that like a necklace plays an important role in both the like relationships there. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about the necklace a lot, too. And I was almost like trying to draw some parallels. But yeah, I don't really have. Like, yes, there is the necklace, but I don't really have, like, a strong, you know, it's not like in Vampire Diaries where you've pointed out many times, like, 
Elena is wearing it when she is with Stefan, yeah. and she's not wearing it when she is like with Damon, either yeah. intentionally or because it's gotten lost or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it seems like Conrad mostly has Belly's infinity necklace. I feel like yeah. I don't even remember her wearing it. I remember the I daisies. Yeah. Those necklaces, but not as much the infinity. Yeah, I almost wonder then if, like, Conrad having the necklace is almost more telling of his feelings towards yeah. Belly. Because, of course, he's, like, always touching it and holding it and looking at it when he's, yeah. like, of course, having feelings for her. Um, rather than, like, Belly with the necklace being about him. Yeah. It's an interesting, like, weird... They're doing different things with the necklaces, but they're both using it, the necklaces, as, like, this important storytelling device to sort of... Definitely. ...indicate something to us, which in Summer I Turn Pretty is not as clear to me, but in Vampire is, like, of course, very clear. Yeah. No, I definitely think so. I think, yeah, there's more to be said about Conrad and the necklace, for sure. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get more of that in the third season. That necklace is yeah, going to crop up gotta again. Yeah, it's got to come back. It will definitely come back. Yeah. Um, and so I think going into the last part of the second season of The Summer I Turned Pretty, um, a big thing is, of course, that shift of then Belly getting together with Jeremiah right. and how that all goes down. Um, for me, that's such like a Conrad is Damon moment. First of all, how he acts, the sarcasm, the like drama of it all. Ooh. Do you think that's Ste- okay? No it's humanity. No Ste- humanity, Stefan. Okay, it is no humanity, Stefan. Literally, Stephen. the whole car ride to Brown when they're taking him for his, for taking Conrad for his final. Everything was giving no it's humanity. It's giving no Stephen. humanity, Stefan. <laughs> but see, in my brain, I was like, it way. can't be no humanity, Stefan, because there is humanity right. in this way. But I know, I thought that too. I was like, it's Damon yeah. in general, or no humanity, Stefan. Even then, though, I feel like we've talked about this this season. Stefan does have some moments where he's bantering with Damon. It's where true. he does have some, uh, like, he has some little quips where he puts yeah. Damon in his place. Where That's he true. Kind of tells him off a little bit and sasses him. So That's I don't true. know. This, that was another thing that I actually thought of as being Stefan. Mostly no humanity Stefan, which yes. is hard because that's not even a concept in that's The Summer I Turned Pretty. That's what makes a but. lot of this hard to compare is the yeah. supernatural of it all really heightens, intensifies, yes, uh, quickens the pace of everything yeah. in Vampire Diaries comparatively to The Summer I Turned Pretty. I mean, I think for me it's like a lot of the justification in the ships and in Elena moving at the speeds between them that she does, like... Because, of course, when Elena does break up with Stefan to get mm-hmm. with Damon, a big factor there is that she became a vampire. Right. And, of course, was sired to Damon, but also had her emotions heightened right. by becoming a vampire, um, which just justifies the sort of flip there in a way that, like, Belly cannot have. Like, she, yeah. that girl needed to wait, like, a couple years before flipping, if at all, which is not what she does. Yeah. Um, not at all. And then, yeah, of course, even with Stefan and Elena, there's the whole, I don't even, faded doppelganger nonsense that goes on there. That's true, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a moment where Jeremiah points out that there's, like, an invisible force between Conrad and Belly. Yeah. Which I think could, that's, again, another thing that could really strongly be read either way. You could think of it as, you know, there has always been something between Damon and Elena because they do seem just drawn to each other. But there's also, like, the doppelganger, like, not yeah. curse, but, like, the fated-to-be-together doppelgangers. Yeah. I don't know. It's just so... There's such strong parallels either way. Yeah. It's so tricky. Um, another scene I wanted to talk about is that conversation that Jeremiah and mm-hmm. Conrad have about, you know, do you still love Belly? Right. And the, when it is becoming clear that... The sides, the tides are changing. Yeah. Um, and the brothers kind of sit down and finally have a conversation about it. Um, Jeremiah and uh, Conrad talk about it. And it really parallels conversations that Stefan and Damon have mm-hmm. had about like the, you know, Conrad says she doesn't want me. Um, which is like parallel to some stuff that Damon has said about Elena and like the you know she doesn't want me she chose yeah. you she wants you i do think conrad is a little bit more i don't know self again self-destructive i suppose like he's sort of the one that is putting that out there if he went to belly and said he actually really wanted to be mm. with her i find it hard to believe that she would still choose jeremiah yeah um which is i think why i see him as a demon because stefan was never like that when he and elena broke up i think he always felt a little like entitled to elena over Mm -hmm. damon in a way that like i don't know i mean stefan of course is very self-sacrificing and like willing to make everyone else around him happy in a way that like yeah damon maybe not as much is um 
But I don't know. I think it's hard that, like, ultimately Conrad does that sort of, like, I'll get out of the way. I'll let you two be together. Yeah. Because Damon's the one in Vampire Diaries that's always doing that. Yeah. I, I do think that's a good case for Conrad being Damon. But I don't know. I just think there are so many, like, similar actions that Stefan also takes when he's starting to lose Elena. Which is also why I feel like this, the parallel is stronger to Conrad being Stefan because they're both in a situation where they're about to lose Elena and Belly respectively. Like they're about to lose her. So they sort of like concede. Yeah. Whereas I do sort of think, you know, that is overall more of Damon's vibe. Yeah. But I don't know. Context, I think, you know, you're about to lose her. It's like, OK, well. Yeah, but that's the thing. I it's like see. I think Conrad is only losing her because of his own choice to lose. Oh, her. yeah, that's that's true. the thing. I think that makes it really different for me is that like, again, like if Conrad wanted Belly and was yeah. willing to fight for her, I think that would have changed everything. But he yeah. conceded not because he was about to lose, but because he would win. I think. And because he would hurt his brother in the process. I think it was almost sort of like a... I don't know if it was like trying to make peace with his brother so much as like almost accepting the punishment for himself. Because isn't that Mm. kind of what he says to... um, I'm forgetting that guy's name in season one who's always on the boat. um, Who's... What is his name? <laughs> I don't. You know who I'm talking about. The writer. Yes, the writer. Um, Why am I drawing such a blank? I can't think of his name, but the guy that like Conrad Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. Yes, Cleveland. Um, Cleveland something. I was gonna yeah. say Cleveland Brown, but I think that's a football team. I was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cleveland. I was thinking like Grover Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have no For clue. <laughs> Whoever this guy is. Um, yeah. But Conrad has a pretty honest conversation yeah. with him, and I think in a lot of ways he shows a lot of what he ends up doing in like the thinking he doesn't deserve things and that he doesn't deserve Mm -hmm. love and like i don't know that kind of stuff to me again feels more damon i feel like stefan always believes that he is deserving of again to me stefan kind of comes off as entitled to yeah love and to elena and to a lot of this like human stuff a lot of the time more so than damon who thinks he's like deserving of I don't know. Stefan obviously is like a ripper has his moments where he's like, I deserve to die. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard. It, it does make it harder. And I will say now that we're like talking about it a little bit more, I feel like a lot of my comparisons are when Stefan is sort of either, you know, he's coming back from the ripper binge or he has his humanity off, things like that. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think also I think, you know, it's kind of doesn't get talked about as much but jeremiah also does say in the finale that he won't get in belly's way if she wants to be with conrad that's true but do we believe him well no absolutely not (laughs) but (laughs) but i think you know conrad it comes off way more as self-sacrificing because of what you said because he would win yeah if he wasn't self-sacrificing yeah but they both have moments where they're like oh well i would let like you can do your own thing like it's up to you to choose you have to pick i don't know yeah yeah, I think, I mean, again, I think both brothers do have moments in the show where they're willing to let Belly choose the other one. I think yeah. it's like episode five. Jeremiah is like, OK, well, you can be with Conrad. He's in love with you. And Conrad, obviously, like that's his whole ending plot. Like he lets Belly be with Jeremiah. I think, again, I think that can sort of be argued either way. But it's more the little moments for me that make up the parallels. So... A few of the moments for like Conrad being Stefan is in episode three when they go to the prom episode three of season two they go to the prom I don't know just the way Conrad doesn't want to dance with Belly and just how weird he's being like sort of ruining this potentially perfect night that for some reason read to me like Stefan I feel like Damon would never have let Elena down in that way yeah and I think maybe that's what it comes down to is I don't really think of any examples of Damon ever really letting belly down or Damon letting belly down Damon letting Elena down but I feel like there's definitely examples maybe I'm too strong of a Delana killing killing her brother (laughs) or I don't know okay we're gonna bring in murder I mean (laughs) so let's define then you're a Jeremiah shipper then no I'm I'm for sure team Conrad in like I want (laughs) So that makes no sense. It makes no sense. It may, I'm Team Conrad, and I want him to go to Stanford and find someone else, and, oh, okay, and, okay. and have his his own life. Um, 
I love Conrad so much. I love I Conrad. literally love him. That's the thing that's so interesting is I do love Conrad and I love Damon. I like Stefan. I like Jeremiah. Yeah. <laughs> but those two are my boys. Yeah, and so of I course. think that is sort of what is biasing me in wanting to of draw course. Conrad as Damon a little bit stronger. Um, yeah. And I think it is those like sort of ignoring sometimes the faults of one or the other. Yeah. In favor of being like, oh, well, Damon never let Elena down. <laughs> Literally killed her brother in front of her eyes. Okay. It's so <laughs> Killed different. Aaron Whitmore. It's so different. <laughs> it's so different. How... <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure Jeremiah will let down Belly. Well, if the books are any indication, (laughs) he will. Yeah, that's true. If you don't want to know what happens in the books, don't read TikTok comments because we do know. But yeah, I don't know. I just think those little moments where Conrad isn't stepping up for Belly when he needs to or should. I don't know. Those for me more are Stefan. And again, I, I do think it can be contributed to grief. It's interesting. And that's why I'm willing to forgive it and still be Team Conrad and yeah. still love him. But I don't know. Those to me just seem more more Stefan. And even like at the funeral when, you know, Belly sees Conrad with Audrey, I think her name is. Something like that. And they like run through the house. Belly s- yells at him, I hate you. And he yells like, good. Like, that to me is so Stefan. Like, Stefan is all, again, Yeah. but, like, when, after they already are going through hardship with the Ripper stuff. Yeah. So, maybe that's where my comparisons kind of crumble, but just the, I hate you, good. Like, that's so Elena and Stefan to me. Like, I don't know. See, that's where it's so interesting, because I see those exact same things as so Damon. Because it's like, yeah, Damon is, I mean, that is the crux of every fight that Damon and Elena have, is like, you had to, what is the line that's always on on um tiktok where she's like you let me down again yeah you blah 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 again like, yeah that's always the crux of their things is like i had to clean up your mess again, again. like that's always the elena damon thing it's and true. it does it's true. feel like conrad is like messy in that way but i don't know i mean that's where it's impossible to compare 20 episodes of the summer i turned yes. pretty yeah so like 158 or whatever there are of vampire diaries it's like we can find anything we want in Vampire yeah. Diaries to compare to The Summer I Turned Pretty because there's just so much more content to compare yeah. to. Um, it's harder to pigeonhole The Summer I Turned Pretty into, you know, whatever bucket you want because there's just not that much of it. And like we were saying, yeah. like, we haven't even seen her really with either boy very right. often. We've barely seen her out of summer. So, like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard. You can really fit the argument any which way you want. Um, yeah, I and- think... I think not seeing more is what's sort of giving me these parallels too, because the little moments we do get with Jeremiah and Belly also scream very Damon Elena to me, because there's the moment when he goes on the ride with Belly after they lose the, like the boardwalk crawl, whatever it is. And he goes on that ride with her, like stepping up like that just feels very Damon and just the fun that they have together. So Stefan to me. We're literally again. I don't like, understand. I'm so confused. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if it comes down to our know. reading of Summer I Turned Pretty or our reading of Vampire Diaries being different. That's just so funny. Interesting. I don't know. I will say, and I was thinking about this a little bit. I was thinking, I have grown to like Stefan a lot more on this rewatch. Like yes. us talking about it more in depth. So maybe that's why I'm having it, like having this view of it. But I don't know. For some reason, those like like the fun that they have together, like Jeremiah and Belly just reads more as like Damon and Elena. It's interesting. And actually one thing that was like an actually visual parallel, like I'll have to go watch and compare the clips, but there was also a moment, I think it's like episode six of season two where Belly pushes Jeremiah into the pool Mm -hmm. when they're about to have to leave, like for one of the many hundred times they have to leave the lake house for good. Yeah. Belly pushes Jeremiah into the pool. And that sort of reminded me of the beginning of season three when Damon follows Elena and Alaric to oh. hunt down Stefan. Yeah. And Damon pushes Elena into like the swimming hole. Yeah, I yeah. I don't know. Just like the playfulness. Interesting. Which again, it could just be because of what they're doing with Jeremiah's character and his yeah. personality. He yes. generally is just lighter. Yes. I will like fully on like full on agree that Jeremiah personality wise a hundred percent is the Damon. I mean yeah. he is the Playboy blue eyes, yes. flirty. I know. Like that's just the comparison that's the most obvious yeah. there. And of course Gavin did play young Dean yeah. and we can't deny it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, we know if Vampire Diaries aired now, Damon would, of course, be a bisexual king oh, just like Jeremiah. He totally would. He totally would. <laughs> he definitely would have been. It just 
2010s was too early yeah, for that. Yeah, 2010s. They weren't <laughs> ready yet. They weren't ready to do that. Obviously, it can go either way. Either brother could be either brother. But for me, the thing is that, like, I don't think the brotherhoods, like, the relationship between Conrad and Jeremiah and the relationships between Stefan and Damon are similar at all. I don't know. I think that's where, and again, maybe that makes up a lot of the difference within the show and how Belly has her relationship with them. Yeah. Maybe that makes a big part of the difference. But I just don't see those brotherhoods as being similar at all. I would argue that it maybe is similar if we're only looking at like season one or two of Vampire Diaries. Yeah. It, it's hard because again, like the stakes are so different. Like yes, vowing that you're going to sure. give your brother an eternity of misery because he turns you into a vampire. Yeah. It's very different very levels different. than the other two brothers are against. Um, but yeah, again, it's like it comes down to there just being so much more content on one side right. versus the other. Because of course, the Vampire Diaries, I think, really ends up Of any of the pairings, it ends up being about the brothers more than their relationships with Elena. Which is, of course, in part to Nina leaving the show a little early. Yeah, of course. But I I think that is the large value of Vampire Diaries is brotherly love. Yes. We're not getting that from Summer I No, we're really not getting that. And I would, actually, I would love them to go in that direction and have some way to sort of, like, enhance that brotherhood relationship in the end. But yeah, I feel like at this point, it doesn't seem like... The Brotherhood is that strong, and I feel like this is going to damage it beyond repair. Again, having not read the books, but... And I sort of feel like Damon and Stefan would have never allowed their relationship with Elena to get in the way. No matter who she was with, obviously, you know, it starts off, Damon has promised Stefan an eternity of misery. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, they always loved each other more, or at least as much as Elena. Yeah, and I again, this kind of circles back to what we were talking about at the start of I think Elena would have never let herself be the right. thing that broke them up. I mean, if we're being real, Elena is even the reason that they become what they are. Because yeah. when she gets True. involved, they hate each other. They're not yeah. talking at all. <laughs> they really probably maybe would have killed the other. Stefan actually Possibly. was going to go kill Damon that night he killed yeah lexi vicky somebody lexi. yeah i'm pretty sure it was he lexi killed somebody and elena showed up at the house i actually yeah. think it was right before lexi i can't think of what episode it was oh no the uh, the uncle what's his name zach zach that's yes. right yeah, yeah when yeah, he yeah, found yeah, yeah. zach dead he was gonna he was gonna go kill yeah damon but he found elena outside which maybe he wasn't we can always make that argument of course but right i don't know elena kind Pretty of comes taken. in at a point when they are like as bad as they ever could be right and she's really a big part in helping bridge the two back together. Yeah. And then even with her like flip, you know, flip between the two and the ways that she does, you know, inevitably come between them. She never lets that actually like separate them. And they do get to a point where, like you said, their relationship does get fixed to the point where they're not even going to let Elena, yeah. you know, come between them. So, yeah, I hope we get that out of um, I know the other boys. I hope so too. But maybe that is the difference. Like obviously, Belly has known them their whole lives. She's known Conrad and Jeremiah their whole lives, and she was always there. And now she is a big part of them breaking apart. So I I find it hard to believe that Belly will be the glue that yeah. helps repair their relationship, or even will like a like that whole you know the whole love triangle. I feel like that will really preclude conrad and jeremiah coming back together at all whereas yeah like you said elena sort of was the glue realistically yeah yeah she at least was the initial bonding agent yeah. that like put them back together yeah and i do think that like you're right that belly if anything is gonna like prevent them from becoming Definitely. friends again rather than from like bonding their friend i don't i do not see a world in which belly will ever be helpful in bringing them back together i think of course their their mother dying also is like such a large factor in this and it's so unfortunate because that should be the thing that makes them so much stronger and closer and they should be like look you know they're the only ones as her two sons they're the only people who should understand what the other's going through um But they also just with the grief are finding so much about that. You know, like Jeremiah was so unjustified when he was like, Conrad, where were you when mom was dying? (laughs) You know, how dare you go to school? Yeah, Yeah. that was kind of You drive home every week. I was here every day because I was in high school. Like, bro. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Again, that's an aside. Yeah, that's like, it's so high school, it's hard to even talk about that. (laughs) Yeah. But But yeah, that's that's all to say Belly is not the... um, 
she's not the only cause of their issues true it's, it's sometimes them and then timing is just terrible that they're both about to go to college and be like pretty separated like yeah this could really sh- like truly lead to them being estranged yeah. in the same way that Stefan and damon are when we pick up vampire diaries so yeah yeah i definitely see the summer i turned pretty ending off on a more like beginning of vampire diaries note for the brotherhood than the ending yeah but i don't yeah. know i would love to see them bring out the brotherhood i think the Brotherhood is what makes the Vampire Diaries, the originals. Yeah, it does. So many of those shows, so good, I think is the brotherly love. I think and so, like, too. Yeah, I, I think that's really... Yeah, because whether you're Team Stefan or St- Team Damon, like, you're Team Salvatore brothers loving yes. each other. And, like, you're exactly. Team, like, the family being together. Like, I have never seen anybody be like, I hate when the brothers are together. I know, I, I know. hate <laughs> when they come back together. That's the best part yeah. of the show. So I think we would all like to see that yeah. in the third season. So... Maybe we'll have to revisit this when the third season Definitely. comes out because, of course, like, again, 20 episodes versus, like, 160, there's yeah. just going to be a lot more to talk about. So if you do want to see us talk about season three when that comes out, please let us know. We would, you know, love to revisit it if there's more comparisons to be drawn between the yeah. two. Yeah, and if there are anything, like, if there's anything else that you guys want to see comparisons to, I've been really enjoying these little special yeah. episodes. Like, this was fun. Yeah, they're so fun. And yeah. there's so many things that we can compare Vampire Diaries to, Definitely. whether it's, like, Twilight or Akatar or any of the dozens of other yeah. media out there. Buffy. Yeah, True yeah. True Blood. I don't know. There's a lot out there. And there's Tell us now so we have time to watch or read those things. Yeah, definitely. To. Yeah, if we're talking Buffy or like True Blood, yeah. you got to give me a minute. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen either. So definitely yeah. let us know if you have any ideas like that. Anything else that you think would serve to compare to yeah. Vampire Diaries. We'd love to like break that stuff down. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, you can contribute to this conversation about the summer I turned pretty times vampire diaries yeah. on all of our various social media. We always post clips on our TikTok and our Instagram, um, all of the like, you know, podcast stuff, as well as some fun memes and edits and other things that you can go check out. We're at the Rip Diaries podcast. You can also listen to this podcast on Spotify and Apple podcasts, or you can watch the podcast on YouTube for the video version. Next yeah. week, we'll have a special episode. Yeah, we won't reveal yeah, yet. I was gonna say topic. we won't We're reveal, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be a nice like breakdown of um, an interesting kind of question yeah. that came out of season one of Vampire Diaries. So yeah, yeah, expect that soon. And at some point, we'll be getting into season two. So stick around for yeah, that. Yeah, stay tuned for that. I love season two. Oh, it's the best. It's so good. I'm so ready for it and fall and everything. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for watching and or listening to this one. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.